Frank McAllister was 19 years old when he was fatally attacked. The authorities now say they finally closed the file on this decades old cold case. It all began on the 7th of May 1993 in Redding, California. Brian Hawkins was at the apartment of sibling Shanda Culver and Curtis Culver when they all learned that Frank had just received a $4,500 insurance payout from a car accident that happened a few months earlier. He was looking to use this money to purchase a large amount of meth and then non sell it for a profit. Brian spoke to Frank over the phone and told him to come and pick them all up and take them to Shingletown where they knew people he could buy the meth from. Once the decision was made to go to Shingletown, Shanda suggested they murder Frank because of the money he had on him and removed a pocket knife from a box in the closet to show she was serious. Shortly thereafter, Frank arrived and they left together in his car. Frank was driving and Curtis was in the front passenger seat next to him. Seated behind Frank was Brian and Shanna was directly behind Curtis. When they arrived at Shingletown, Brian told Frank to head down Alwood Lane, past Grace and Nora Lakes, and then to pull into a dirt turnoff off the road and park the car. The four of them sat in the car for well over an hour just talking. During this time, Shanna removed a pocket knife from her purse and gestured Brian to take it and stab Frank with it. He took the knife from her, but as he did, Curtis pulled out his own knife and started stabbing Frank in the neck. Frank tried escaping and opened his door and staggered away. They all got out of the vehicle and followed him before he collapsed on his back. Brian then straddled him and began stabbing him multiple times in the throat and chest. Curtis then dragged Frank's body towards the front of the car and dropped a huge rock on his head. They took his cash and drove his car back to Reading, leaving his body behind. They left his car in a Costco parking lot before getting a taxi back to the apartment and splitting the cash. That same day, the authorities were contacted after finding Frank's car sitting in the parking lot with lots of blood on the inside and outside, but there's no sign of Frank and he was reported missing. Investigators quickly zeroed in on Brian Curtis and Shanna as suspects, since they were the last people to see Frank. All three said they were with him in his vehicle on the day he disappeared. They all said that Frank dropped them off near Waterworks Park, and that was the last time they saw or heard from him. On the 13th of April 1994, Frank's skeletal remains were found by mushroom hunters. He had his wallet, social security and driver's license on him. An autopsy determined that he died of having his throat slashed. The authorities said that all three were contacted and interviewed multiple times over the next 25 years, and all three maintained their innocence in the murder during that time. On the 9th of January 2018, Brian was interviewed on TV by an ABC affiliate. He admitted to his part in murdering Frank and attributed his religious faith to his decision to come forward. He said that he was going to turn himself into the authorities immediately after the interview, which he did because he couldn't live with the guilt anymore. The investigators noted he appeared to be very upset and was physically shaking and crying all the time. He named the Culver siblings as his accomplices and the motive of the murder was robbery. He was immediately arrested and booked into the Shasta County Jail. The following day, Curtis and Shannon were found in the Red Bluff area and were arrested and also booked into the Chester County Jail. On the 14th of January 2022, Shannon and Curtis pleaded guilty to intentional homicide and robbery after Brian had already pleaded guilty in November of 2019. Sentencing is due on the 25th of February, where they face between 20 to 35 years in prison, bringing closure to a decades-old cold case. <laughs> 